Anyway, the only way we can connect on this lien, God forbid something should happen, is through a foreclosure process. And in that foreclosure process, we have to make sure that whoever comes and buys that property is willing to pay $10 million or more in order for us to collect on that lien. There's a lot of, a lot of kind of uh, chances that let, let, let me clarify one, one point for the Madam Mayor. Um, these bonds are for various parts, parcels of the property, so it's very unlikely that work would commence on, it, on all of these parcels all at once uh, to where the $10 million would be fully at risk. Uh, so therefore, that, that would be extremely, extremely rare. So in all likelihood, if there, we, you might start a phase, and then if that phase didn't continue, you might have a half a million dollars in bonds or a million two in bonds. And that's why you're really very well protected because you have a first lien position on these villages three through ten. You know that, you collect on it. Well, they use oh, through okay, foreclosure. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's and, really and what's fun. great is that you don't need to wait for somebody to make a decision. It's you're in total control as a council to decide if you want to move forward with foreclosure. Per, per the way the contract reads. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's get our questions asked first. Madam Mayor, uh, and for those in the audiences here and abroad, I submitted to staff approximately 20 questions earlier today, which they have since given me answers to to cover a number of points, especially those that were raised in local press. And I'd like to share some of that with you so we can be somewhat expedient and hopefully we'll provide the answers to some who may have questions and public comments. My first question started out with a statement that there's uh, three ways to uh, guarantee performance of infrastructure improvements on a development. One would be through a, a cash deposit equal to the value of what is expected. Number two would be a performance bond. And then I, I comment against the performance bond. I, I, I ask if there was a significant uh, possibility that a variety of financial institutions could uh, be involved in those uh, performance bonds, and the answer basically was yes, there were some that, that uh, specialized in that area. Then I ask if the holder of the bonds, now in this case it's a number of insurance companies, and in this case one of the insurance companies involved over there is AIG, Correct. which we know has less than a stellar rating. I said if the holder of the bond becomes insolvent via a number of reasons, the bond funds will no longer be available. And the answer to that question is yes. So there is no permanent security once you have a bond. And then I go on to say as, a first, as the first place holder lien against the property where the work contract is to be carried out, the security for this work is a lien that must be satisfied before the property can change hands. And the answer was yes. That if the property ever changed hands, <coughs> whatever the sale price of the property is plus the amount of the lien would have to be tendered during escrow. Um, in the event that a contractor becomes insolvent through bankruptcy, the lien follows the property. Is that correct? And the answer was yes. So my conclusion was, therefore, unless the dirt disappears, e.g. an earthquake, the lien will still be in place. Correct. And the answer was yes. Then I go on to say, why is a bond, why is a bond or letter of credit the usual means of securing construction performance? Um, it was a lengthy answer, and I don't know, Jason or Mr. Daniels, could you quickly say why in ten seconds? Well, I think Mr. Costa. If you want to sit while he goes through this. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kozak had already brought up the, the point on that issue is that most 
most minor developments like this are already uh, encumbered with another op the lien or another obligation. What, what, what he's offering is a first position, which you can't get any better than that than actually the lien. Okay, it was mentioned in the press, and I incorrectly stated this in my question, that uh, the terrace, terrace project, I, I said vintage and that was incorrect, was uh, secured by liens against the property and the city got nothing. Is that true? Madam Mayor, uh, Councilor Baker, um, I had understood your question you to mean the village. I know. I said I'd go. Uh, now I'm putting you on the hot seat. I guess you are. Um, on the terraces, uh, I, it was it was not it was not secured with a lien. Okay. There are, there were liens on the property, right? But that, that, that they were not first placeholders, right? Well, aware. you know, we don't have any I'm not reason to know that. The city did not have a lien contract with the terraces. Okay. And then I, I asked a simple question, except I got a four-line response. Is there any similarity between the letter of credit securing the Mission Lake Shopping Center and this proposal? The answer, the short answer is no. And then I asked how the 20 million uh, evaluation of the property was right, arrived at, and tonight we received a copy of an appraisal dated August 19, 2009, which would indicate that it meets at least that criteria. Uh, how does that compare with the recent purchase price? Well, they bought the land for, oh, I can't remember, it says an appraisal. 7.8. 7.8 million, and uh, the, uh, in any event, whatever the amount of the lien is, it will be satisfied before anything can be sold. And so, you know, if that brings the value of the property higher because of the lien, so be it. Or if the value of the property is zero, if there's a $10,000 lien against it, $10,000 will be what the purchaser of the property will have to pay, as I understand it. Correct me, experts, if I'm wrong. Okay. Could, under any circumstances that you envision, uh, could a lien become worthless? And the answer I got was if the landowner was fraudulent in his representations to the city, that the land is free of obligations, the city did not assure themselves that the property is free and clear of obligations and developable and fully entitled land is worth nothing. In other words, the question was answered earlier in the, um, last I said, the city is currently receiving no income, that's correct, under this proposal the city would receive $100,000 a year. Um, Next to last question, can you think of any reason why a project secured by a lien against the pro property would be worth anything less than a bond for the same amount? The answer to that is no. Lastly, what is the value of the current bond? And because there's multiple bonds, that question really couldn't be answered. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to uh, just state for the record that uh, I've had contact with the uh, developer Mr. Kozak uh, regarding this uh, this deal. Um, he talked about it one or two times uh, to try and share with me what the concern, what his concern was. Uh, my view is this isn't just a bad deal for the community. It's a very bad deal. It's uh, taking away a tremendous amount of security that we now have, and we're not getting anything in return. The uh, as far as AIG being uh, insolvent, they're 8% owned by the federal government. They're the largest insurer in the world. And um, the federal government has 160 billion shares in AIG. So to the, to the suggestion that the bonding company is somehow going to vanish or disappear, it's not without merit. The U.S. government would have to vanish and disappear. And we're going to be in a depression if that happens. The, um, talking about the first position on this property, section two, as I read this, it says that uh, we'll end up being subordinated by a new loan. And Mr. Kozak has said that uh, if another lender comes along, that they'll agree to take second position. I don't think I'll, I don't know any too many lenders that are going to loan that kind of money and, and take a, uh, a second position. Even having the lien doesn't guarantee that we get the improvements done. And uh, the Village Shopping Center was mentioned, although I think Mr. Baker was referring to um, 
hacienda of us at the terraces. But the problem we had at the village is we had no means to affect the public improvements that, was, that would have been secured by a third party bond, as is the case on this project. The, um, what this city is looking for is to make sure that this project doesn't become an eyesore or a problem. Not that we want ownership in it or a lean position. We want to make sure that if uh, water lines are being undermined or uh, fire hydrants are uh, tipping over, if uh, roads aren't completed, that those things get done. And right now we have the ability to make sure that those things get done. When uh, D.R. Horton was here before us asking for the same thing as when his council rejected that, they assured us they weren't going anywhere. They said, we're here. I think even one of the council members that since resigned said that uh, they were going to start building. So it wasn't shortly thereafter that they actually did pull out. Once you get these uh, bonds released, you've got a much more marketable piece of property. Um, it's not encumbered by the, uh, the cost of maintaining the bonds. And um, you know, I don't know where to begin on this one. This one, to me, is so bad and giving up so much security for this community with so many problems that we've had in this community before. The projects that have installed and become an eyesore have been a problem. That I don't see how in the, in the residents and the taxpayers' best interest, the people we sit up here, that we can even consider this. I'm, I'm, I see the overwhelming effort that's been done here, the many emails that have gone back and forth to try and make the case for this one. But I don't see anything in here that makes a good case for the residents that, that we're getting the best security we got. I understand that uh, you know, the person who's asking for this has got a problem trying to get a uh, the bond. It's got a relationship with D.R. Horton. I'm sure they're asking him to uh, you know, go and go and get your bonds. We're tired of holding these. But that's not our city's and that's not our residents' problem. And we can't be put at risk like this. The city engineer said in the the uh, lean is an acceptable method. Well, it's an acceptable method, but it's not the only method we have, and it's not the one that we have to accept. And when we have a bond, it's, a lien isn't something that we should accept and give up the bond. The appraisal that we're relying on was supplied by the developer, not by our city staff. There's been very little research into the valuation of this property. I haven't had time to look at it. It was just handed to me as I got up here. I don't see how any of my fellow colleagues can sit here and rely on this appraisal when you've just been handed it, unless there's been a whole lot of discussion going on about this that I, I haven't heard about. 